Uh, okay, I will try my best to squeeze this into five minutes. Um, we have all these great technical topics here, so I decided to do this time something a little bit different and just summarize um, all the, the license questions I received during the, the year from community members, from employees, and just to give a short overview for everybody to, to maybe in the future you can answer at least uh, some easy questions um, by yourself or know how to look at to find the right answers. So first question, of, co of course, some of you might um, ask you, why should I care? Well, for first, first point is maintainability of your whole project. We as a developer, we care really much about maintainability, maintainability of our code. We make sure that it, we can easily extend it, that we can um, apply tests to it and all the stuff so that we can use our code for a long time. And often we forget that also the legal side of our project need to be maintainable for a long time because also um, the environment around our projects can change. We can, uh, the, 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 the laws can change, technical environment can change, so that at some point you might want to adapt your license to the new, new world you live in, basically. And of course, if you develop an app, you want to know if a third-party library is, is um, com compatible with your app, and you want to probably to know what other people can do with your software and what they can't. And another important point for me is that a license is really also somehow a document which constitutes the, the community you build around your software. So it is, describes the basic rules, um, how people um, they work together, which rules are applied to the code they create together. So it's really important to think about how your community will look like, uh, under which um, rules you want to work together. So just really quick, um, if you look at the free software and open source license, you can break this down in two main categories. That's everything I want to say. And this are, one is the copyleft license, which um, protect basically your freedom to use, study, share, and improve the software. And the non-protecting license, which will give you exactly the same rights, but um, allow other people to do with them whatever they want. So that's really um, cut down to the easiest um, answer to, to, to how different kind of free software license exist, but I think that's enough for here. So with Nextcloud, we choose the GNU HGPL, um, which is a strong protecting license, um, so it makes sure that the software will always stay free. Um, we also recommend to use the or any later um, version clause, because as I said at the beginning, that's exactly which allows us to, to keep the, also the legal side of the project in the long run maintainability. So if um, something, something will pop up where uh, the license needs to be updated to make sure that we can also move to the next version of the license. Um, we have no contributor agreement or anything else, so everybody has exactly the same rights on, on the code. There is no differentiation. Um, nobody can make the code ever proprietary. Expect you can, of course, take your pass you write and use it in any other program you want because you always keep the copyright on your stuff. And I think that's really important to play, create this level playing field um, to, to grow the community with users, customers, and partners all together. Um, to still um, create some certainty about the legal situation of, of the project, especially for customers, we introduced the developer certified of origin. That's a thing which is done by, the mo by most of the large um, free software projects these days, like the Linux kernel, Eclipse, um, Docker, and many more. And it's basically, if someone commits some code, he, by signing his commit, he just says, OK, I wrote this code by my own, and I can and I contribute this to the project under the IGPL, under the project license, or if I am employed by my customer, allowed me to do it, or uh, if I took the code from somewhere else, I checked as good as possible that I'm allowed to, to give the code to you under, under the license. So that's why it's really important to sign your comments, even if I know developers often find this a little bit, yeah, say, oh, well, I have to do it, but it's, it really adds some legal certainty to, to our project. And if you write a Nextcloud app, um, you always have to make sure that both um, licenses are compatible, your Nextcloud, the Nextcloud server and your app. Um, we recommend to just use the same license as you, we use for the server, the GNU HGPL or later for your app. But if you really wish, you could also choose some of the compatible license. And even if you choose one of the comp com compatible license, of course, the combination will be always GNU HGPL. But you can also, if you prefer, to choose a different license for your app. And the same goes for third-party libraries. If you need a library for your app, um, then you also have to make sure that they are compatible. So what does it mean to be compatible? compatible? Um, does just mean in order to combine two programs, which is the app and the, and the server, you need to make sure that both developers, developer of the app and developer of the server, um, give you the rights to the same rights to do this with the software. So and if both licenses uh, allow you to, to, to use the software the same way, then they are compatible, and then you can, can use them together. Um, and, of course, often the question came up, so when does a license need to be compa compatible? And that's always if you form a single program out of each other. So if you combine it in a way 
that at the end you would say it results in a single program. And there are some criteria you can also look up in the FAQ from the GNU project, which um, gives you a hint if this is the case. Uh, one is if a, if a program is linked together with the app, if it shares um, um, data structures and run in the same memory, if it uh, makes function calls to each other in both directions. And if you look at Nextcloud and Nextcloud apps, you will see that that's the case um, in both directions. So that's why both sides need always compatible to each other. Um, and uh, the good thing about GNU HGPL v3 is that uh, a lot of licenses are compatible with each other, so all main licenses you find out there you can normally just use with your project. Um, so GPL v3, only by GPL v2 you have to be a little bit careful, this needs to be GPL v2 or later. GPL v2 um, only doesn't work. But as you see, all other main licenses like the LGPL, the Apache license, Mozilla license, um, all those licenses you normally see there are out there um, work. Um, at the end, some resources where I also regularly look up if people ask me some stuff is um, the FAQ from, from the GNU project. It's really great if you have some questions um, how all this stuff works. Um, the Free Software Foundation has a, has a great network of legal experts which has also a public mailing list where you can send questions to if you, if you have some, some legal questions. And there's a new project, a relatively new project from the Linux Foundation, spdx.org, which also tries to unify a little bit away um, how you define copyright in your projects, which then also makes it easier to automate um, this test if everything is compatible, which is always recommended to, to use this best practice defined there. So this was a really quick run through this topic. Um, if you have further questions, just catch me on the floor. I'm here the whole day. And yeah, thank you.